You have a new client and have done the initial assessment. Now you need to write up the treatment plan, but how do you make sure it gets approved and this child gets the services he needs? Most children seeking ABA services have an expansive list of challenges ranging from maladaptive behaviors to academic and social differences. Some need support with daily living skills such as dressing or toilet training. Others need intervention to address feeding or medication acceptance. Play communication and critical thinking skills also rank high on the list for these complex children. With so many needs, which goals should you include in your treatment plan? You spend hours crafting what you think is a well thought out treatment plan only to have the insurance company reject the plan or ask for even more information. Why does this keep happening? The answer is medical necessity. Medical necessity is an agreement between a provider of services and a payer or insurance company. The provider establishes criteria that must be met in order for the provider to receive payment for services. These criteria are often influenced by local and federal laws. When requesting approval for services and for the continuation of services, the provider must justify how each component of the proposed treatment plan meets the medical necessity criteria established by that payer. Each payer provides a specific list of criteria, but there are some common to most. Following these guidelines smooths the approval process and establishes a positive relationship with the payer. Although you should check with each insurance company to determine their specific criteria, some common criteria include a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder, behaviors or deficits relating to the qualifying diagnosis, a referral from a diagnosing physician, other less expensive services are not likely to be effective, the client is not already receiving other ABA services, including at school, the parent or caregiver is willing to participate in services, the service is the least restrictive service available to the client, the treatment plan must include measurable goals that address the behaviors and deficits related to the client's qualifying diagnosis. Now let's take a look at which goals you can include in your treatment plan to justify medical necessity and get your plan approved by the insurance company. First, you must identify the learner's needs through an assessment. Remember that the identified needs must relate to the qualifying diagnosis to meet medical necessity criteria. Since a large body of research supports the use of ABA to address maladaptive behavior and there are no other less expensive services that will address these challenges, insurance companies are quick to approve goals related to addressing behavioral excess. In your assessment, you likely identified many important skill deficits that might have included deficits in the areas of basic skills such as communication or play skills. Social skills that might include limited interactions with those around them. Life skills such as feeding, toileting, or dressing. And academic skills such as letter recognition, math concepts, or even reading. You must address these skill deficits carefully in your plan to align them with medical necessity. Remember that the insurance company is looking for the most cost-effective way to help the learner and will not simply accept that ABA is an effective method of teaching skills. If you can effectively relate skill deficits in any of these areas to the identified maladaptive behaviors or explain how addressing the specific skill deficit will lead to a reduction in the lifetime cost of care, your goals will be approved. If you fail to make this connection, you have missed your opportunity to demonstrate medical necessity. Now let's take a look at some examples to see how you can relate skill deficits to the behaviors associated with a child's qualifying diagnosis. When identifying a goal to address a deficit in matching, you can state that a common antecedent for a child's maladaptive behavior is a demand to complete tasks that are difficult for him. This provides the rationale for why matching is medically necessary for this specific child. When targeting communication skills, the insurance company will want to know why ABA is the most cost-effective way to teach these skills rather than using a less expensive service like speech therapy. Maybe the child doesn't have the imitation or listener skills necessary for speech therapy to be effective. Specify your rationale clearly in your plan. 
If the child does not engage in maladaptive behavior when presented with academic tasks, it's unlikely you can develop an effective argument to include these skills in your plan. The insurance company rightfully believes that it's the school's responsibility to educate the child. If ABA is the only way for the child to learn these skills, the school should pay for the ABA services, not the insurance company. Each time you include a goal to address a skill deficit, make sure you include a rationale for why that skill meets the medical necessity criteria of the payer. This is the key to getting your treatment plans approved and helping your clients access the services they need. 